I'm continuing on with my connector project and in earlier videos I created family tables for my A shell connector and used the replace by family table command and then in another video I showed how to use replace via unrelated component to swap out some of those A shell connectors with C shell connectors and I've been developing my C shell connectors and the problem is unfortunately I can't use a family table for doing them. So I started off with a generic wall mount C shell connector and then I wanted to represent the individual pins and the problem is because in the 13-4 insert arrangements and the 13-8 and also the 1398 they use letters to represent the different entry ports let me turn on my coordinate system visibility maybe you can see some of them in here uh, and because of that I'm not able to use pattern tables or other different functions in order to represent these different configurations for the different pins and sockets. And so I could continue on using the replace by unrelated component, but there is another method I could use to facilitate swapping out one for another since these are unconnected no pun intended, uh, part files uh, to each other. And so the way that you do that is with a special kind of an assembly called an interchange assembly. So to create this interchange assembly, we'll go to the new command, just like if you're creating a standard part or an assembly. And we'll use the radio button for assembly over here. And over on the right, you have different subtypes. And most people never pay attention to these. And the second type is for this special kind of interchange assembly. And so I'm going to name this. Let's call this underscore 20C interchange. And put in my common name, interchange. D thirty eight triple nine wall mount C shell. And I will click OK. And you'll notice that this assembly has a bit of a different interface than if you were doing a regular design assembly. And so this interchange assembly is going to contain the different members that I want to swap out for one another later on. And the nice thing about an interchange assembly is that the members can be a combination of parts and assemblies. They don't have to be all one different type. And so for my first member of the interchange assembly, I'm going to click on the functional command and let's find my regular D38 triple nine 20 C and click open. And here you can see it on the computer screen. So that's my first member. And now let's go ahead and add in the other members. So I will click the functional button again. And let's find our 20 FC4 for the 13-4 insert arrangement. And I'm just going to drop it on the screen here. You'll notice that you get a component placement dashboard on the computer screen to define different constraints. And that can be nice. You could say, hey, you know, I want to go and line up this surface with this surface over here. Instead of distance, let's make them coincident. And maybe line up this surface with this surface just have them nicely arranged on here but I'm going to leave them partially constrained just because the constraints don't matter just position the components roughly where you want them to be and let's continue on I'm going to add in the other three members and let's do a little bit of a cut here because I'm just going to repeat that process where I'm going to click the functional command and then add in the other different members and then roughly position them uh, relatively near each other. And when we come back, you'll see that we'll have five members of the interchange assembly. And now we're back. Okay, so I've got the five different members of the interchange assembly. I use some constraints in order to position them relatively close to each other, but you don't have to define constraints at all for this interchange assembly. Now, in order to swap out one for another, 
what we're going to define are what are called reference tags to specify what geometry in one model is similar to geometry from another model. So for example, when I was assembling this, I was using the coincident constraint with the cylindrical surfaces. So we can define what's called a reference tag. And for the definition, we're going to select what's going to be the same. Let's use the filter over here, just to make sure that I'm only picking surfaces. I saw that some edges were highlighting. So I'm just holding down the control key and picking the same cylindrical surfaces from each of the models. And from the properties tab, I'm going to call this cylindrical for the name of the surface and hit the check mark. And if you take a look in the model tree, we now have a filter that shows that reference tag. And again, I can repeat this process. So for example, I have the entry port coordinate system in all of these different parts. Let's create a tag for that. And I'll select entry here and just make it easy on myself. I'm just using the model tree to say that hey, these different coordinate systems are equivalent to each other. And for the name, let's call this one entry. And now what I would continue doing is repeating, creating these different reference tags for any geometry that could be used for assembling these components to one another or having components assembled to them so I can swap out one for the other quickly and easily in another assembly. But there's another way of setting up these different reference tags, and that's by using a reference pairing table. And here it shows me the two tags that I've already created. You could use an existing assembly to figure out what constraints uh, you're using and what geometry you want to pair up with each other. So let's do that. I'll use the open button and in session I've got that LRU cabling assembly and for the active component I know that the 20FC connector is in there and then we'll click create required tags and it says that oh wait there are four of them in here let's just use the first instance of it and it says all right there are three other tags that are necessary and so one of them is this uh, feature called rear mount and it wants to know hey what is the equivalent of that rear mount feature in the other different models and so for simplicity I'm going to use the model tree again just to grab them from the footer and let's hold down the control key and select rear mount here and repeat that process. And you can see that in the reference table, those values are being filled in. Let me scroll over to the right. Looks like I need one more. And then I can repeat that process for the other two necessary tags. So for example, it wants to know, hey, what surface is equivalent to that surface? And this time, I'll just pick them on the computer screen. Oh, let me hold down the control key. Let me collapse my model tree just so that there's more space over here. And then one other different tag for this top surface over here. So let's pick the corresponding surfaces in the other model. And let's rename these and let's call this the top parallel. And this is the rear mounting surface. And this other one is the rear interface. 
And ideally, I'd want to go and create one other, a few other tags, actually, one other for the front surface for mating and the front interchange assembly and also for the routing access. But I'm not going to do that, and I'm just going to click the OK button. So now that I have my interchange assembly created with these five different members and five different reference tags that specifies what geometry is equivalent to each other in the different members of this interchange assembly, I can go back to my cabling assembly and select one of those different C shell connectors that were placed in here already. Right mouse click and hold and choose the replace command. And you'll notice that it automatically recognizes that this is a member of an interchange assembly. And then I can use the open button and it's interesting that this says family tree. And here it shows the other different members of the interchange assembly. And for this one, maybe it's going to have eight. I need eight different entry ports in here. So I'll select that particular instance from the interchange assembly. Click OK and OK. And now if I take a look in the model tree there, you see the FC8. Let's go and do one more replacement. Let's choose this one and replace. Again, by interchange, use the open button to select which one that I want to use. And let's use the 35 one. And click OK. And so again, now when I take a look at the model tree, there we have the 35 version, the 13-35 insert, and here we have the 13-8 insert. So that shows you how to create an interchange assembly to facilitate replacing unrelated components, and then how to use the replace command with the interchange option to swap out one for the other. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.